Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, we are gonna answer a couple of questions from our good friend, Dev. Whenever you guys send me stuff, I like to try to answer it candidly on camera. <laughs> Not on camera. Uh, just so I don't feel like weird or sleazy, like I'm reenacting something, I don't like that vibe. So I like to, um, if you guys send me stuff, I like to try to capture it candidly and not set up the shot or something because that feels icky to me. Okay. Okay, hello Meg, how you doing? Guess what? <laughs> hey Dev, what's up? We cupped eight cups today. It was mind opening. Everything make, makes sense, like how all the dots are connected. Cupping made me go back to the roasting and farm again, wow. And as usual, the most challenging factory factor was to identify what is what. I did recognize three to four cups though and I realized how important it is to note down in an actual cupping chart as I was recording details in my cell phone. Cool, just wanted to share. How is your cupping going? Um, any suggestions regarding cupping? Have you tried the one minute off soaking after charge temp for dense beans? I wanted to try that but every time I'm having issues like not having enough energy to rise the initial ROR. Ooh, yeah, that's something we can dig into. Um, good morning and good day. Cool, and a bunch of <laughs> funny photos. What's this? Over-caffeinated, yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. Checking out the cupping. Cool camera there. What is that? Sony? Flavor wheel, yep. That's a nice flavor wheel, coffee mind. I'll have to get one of me of those. Cool, dude. Okay, um, and then I said, yeah, let me let me get to this. Okay, the cool, thanks, Dev. Thanks for all of this, I love this. I love this, like, <laughs> cool friendship that we're budding here over the DMs. Um, okay, so let's break it down. You cupped a lot, you cupped eight cups. Yeah, I never cup eight cups at a time. Typically, only in like a professional setting do you see more than like six going on. Um, plus with my setup here, like I have a kettle and the most that I could cup at one time with that one kettle, like because of the water capacity is six cups. So I try to keep my cupping sessions to like six cups. And then, um, yeah, being over caffeinated is an issue. So like in the professional world of like, if you're doing it SEA proper, they will always spit, right? Um, and I just really love the idea of like, when I cupped with Mike over at Clatch, he's like, why? <laughs> why would I spit this out? Why would I waste it? <laughs> and like, so the, the argument is like, you don't want to kind of, you want to cleanse your palate before tasting the next thing, right? But he's so good that um, I think, and, and for whatever his goals are and his purposes for cupping, he doesn't want to do that, you know? And I, and I think that's all about cupping style. There's the standard and you can always deviate from it. Um, but yeah, that's so cool to hear that, you know, as you're cupping and you're learning to roast and control your machine and you're coupling it with cupping, I think they go hand in hand. Like I was just, that's so funny because I was like, writing and writing a little like prompt for myself on like what kind of video I wanted to talk about. Cause every time I, I kind of think about what I've learned from roasting and in my roasting journey and what do I feel about roasting now? Like what are my lessons now? Like if I could tell somebody about roasting, somebody who's new and wanted to approach roasting, like what would I say to them? And I really think that when, as you're learning roasting, there's generally three ways you can kind of go about it. Right, and I'll, I'll like break it down in another video. And um, the other side of learning how to roast, like there's the technicality part of it, like learning how to just operate your machine, you know, and uh, turning your, your, your coffee from green to brown. But the other side of that is straight up cupping. Like <laughs> you have to know the, you have to know what you're doing, right? You have to be able to taste what you're actually um, doing at the roaster. Otherwise it's kind of like, I don't know, you're taking two steps forward, one step back or even two steps back or even three steps back because you're not tasting what you're actually doing. So I think, yeah, for for cupping, it's the other side of the coin to roasting if you're learning how to roast, you know? You gotta taste what you're actually doing. And that's so cool. So you're like, 
you know, everything makes sense. Like how all the dots are connected. I can see that kind of like happening in your brain, which totally happened to me too. Cupping made me go back to roasting and farm again. That's cool. And as usual, the most challenging factor is to identify what is what. Yes, identifying what you're actually tasting. This is so fascinating to me. Like I kind of plateaued with my excitement with cupping a little bit, like um, before Mill City Roasters put put out um, something about cupping. And then I asked like, well, what am I actually tasting? Like when I taste berries, like what does that actually mean? You know, when I taste ferment, what does that actually mean? You know, and so, so I'll link that video again, but it was like learning to identify what's coming from terroir and varietal and cultivar, what's coming from processing, what's coming from the roast. That was so helpful and it really inspired me to um, keep cupping with goals and being like, you know, just having more, feeling like I have more control over my cupping and roasting journey and, and like being confident about the steps I'm taking forward, you know? And I realized how important it is to note down in an actual cupping chart and I was recording details in my cell phone. Yeah, so good note taking in general is really important, but it's like, well, what do I write down? <laughs> what do I write down? Like, so for me, like when I, um, when I started to like figure out what I'm doing with my notes, cause I would write down everything, but I'm like, well, what for, right? So now I have more intentioned, well-intentioned notes like, oh, this is acidic. So that means there's something going on in like maybe um, the middle part of the roast or, or how fast I'm taking this roast, you know? So it, like, this is like a general thing. Like if it's a very kind of harsh, um, high noted acidic, sort of flavors that I'm getting, maybe I'm too fast with it. Maybe I'm not um, roasting the inner part of the bean well enough to like balance out that acidity. So if I feel like something is one note or off kilter or off balance in one way, like acidity forward, maybe it's too fast, you know, cause I generally have an ag aggressive style of roast. Um, and so that it's a, it's a cool way where notes can kind of like you could check yourself with your notes, you know what I'm saying? And how's your cupping going? Yeah, like, so I was just, you know, giving you my feedback on my cupping. Like, I have some coffee that I picked up from um, China, Chinatown coffee. So like, this Mangolin China single origin. I picked some up too, cause I was just hella curious of like how, how I would be able to roast it and if, how it would differ from this roast here, which is also a light roast. And I noticed there's like a lot of chaff coming off this washed processed coffee. So I was like, hmm, like this is, this is one iteration of it. Like, like how is my understanding kind of compare to this other roasters, you know, understanding and stuff. So yeah, in terms of my cupping, like I've improved my freaking, <laughs> I got a better cupping table as you can see. So like this one's much more sturdy. Um, I think that counts like the equipment that you use in terms of your cupping, you know, you're a great example where you have like all uniform containers for your cupping, uh, uniform measurement. Um, you've got the roaster right there. I think you're spending an adequate amount of time for cupping and being really present and having a lot of comparison. Cause if you just say like, if I just cup this, you know, for fun, that's fine. But if I'm trying to actually learn and I'm trying to actually figure out like what does Katy Moore taste like versus Katu Y, what does a medium roast taste like versus this light roast? Is it true that it's light and medium? You know, things like that. I need to have cups on the table or samples on the table on the cupping table that give me contrast and comparison. Cause you're not gonna be able to do that from memory um, with only one cup. So it's great that you cup a lot and you cup often, you know, like the best ideal scenario is every day. Every day you're cupping. Every day we're cupping, <laughs> you know, like every day, you know, it's like um, taste is always changing. And if you don't like hone that skill, just like any other skill, I think it could kind of leave you and get kind of rusty and everything tastes like everything else, you know, um, which is definitely something that I'm dealing with right now, just cause we're, we're kind of busy. I guess in my job, you know, we're kind of busy with it. Um, so I'm not, you know, being as disciplined as I could be in terms of like getting in here and cupping and everything like that. Um, but I try to be, you know, I try to get in here and cup at least once a week, you know, like for a busy person, getting cupping uh, once a week, which that's what I do. I've maintained that. 
um, since my time with Clatch. I've been pretty good about that. At least once a week, I had that little rule for myself, even when I get busy. Um, and yeah, so uh, other suggestions for cupping. Um, you're, you're on the precipice right now where you're saying like things are connecting um, things are making sense, you know, so just keep doing that. Like the more that you do it, I think you'll be able to teach yourself, um, create shortcuts for yourself, create more like well-intentioned notes, or like be able to take the information from the cupping table back to the roaster, from the roaster back to the cupping table, things like that. Um, and you're also a farmer too. So like, wow. <laughs> uh, what's that going to do? I know you were telling me over DM, like, you're doing some like um, carbonic maceration, things like that. So some more like fermentation, experimentation and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and getting in there and cupping that and just comparing it to other things, you know. Um, other suggestions for, for cupping. This is like always been a goal of mine is just like keep cupping different origins and trying to be able to identify like, oh yeah, like that's Ethiopia heirloom or whatever this is uh brazil um what's that novo brand <laughs> mondo novo varietal not brand varietal versus um i don't know guatemala castillo or something catumor catuai whatever you know so like being able to narrow in and be kind of like work towards the idea or the concept of a sommelier where you can taste the varietal taste, the origin. I think that'd be really fun in, in terms of, um, you know, furthering your skills as a cupper. Um, and then being able to identify, I think, process, process versus terroir and varietal. That's like my big number one priority right now in terms of like being able to identify what these flavors, uh, where these flavors are coming from. Right, that's that's so hard. Like I'm, I'm like barely, <laughs> I'm like barely understanding how to taste process. You know, like the ferment, the ferment in the roast. You know, uh, being able to separate that from the caramelization of uh, flavors in the roast that are generated from roasting the coffee. Okay, so now can we identify ver uh, processing versus varietal and terroir things like that? Um, really interesting really fun um but yeah i mean you're only going to do that with a lot of access and exposure to all different kinds of coffee you know what i mean and doing it all the time <laughs> like all the time as much as you can last question have you tried the one minute soaking thing yeah you know i'm very curious about this again coming back to it how the <laughs> like mill city roasters recommends you to soak you know um, I went against that and was like, well, let me, let me, I've tried it. Now let me try their, like Mike's version of roasting. Now, let me try to develop my own style. Um, so yeah, I will try it again in terms of like, when is it appropriate to soak? Right. I've always asked this question. I think I've, I've been putting it out there in, in my videos and stuff. Like when is it appropriate? When do I want to use soaking? Like you said, you mentioned here, uh, I wanted to try it having issues um, for uh, for dense beans and you're having issues like not having enough energy to rise the initial ROR, meaning like, you know, in the beginning of a roast in general, we want enough energy to move through the roast or roast the coffee in a certain amount of time and do certain things during the roast, right? And we need a certain amount of energy or heat at the beginning of the roast so that we could travel that way. It's like having, like how Mike explained to me over at Cloud, she's like, you gotta put enough fuel in the car so you could travel to your destination. If you don't put enough fuel in the car, you're not gonna get to your destination on time, right? Or um, you're gonna get there really late. So there's that balance where that's why we look at the ROR, where we want it to hit a certain number so that we can travel a certain distance, right, within the, within the row. So, you know what, um, keep playing with it. Maybe you just need to charge higher if you're gonna soak. That's that's my like general idea of like, well, if I'm gonna soak, I would need a higher temperature to make up for this soak, right? To make up for this no heat, no heat application, no fuel application in the beginning of the roast. 
Um, and then why would I want to do that? You know, maybe I need, I need power, but I need it to not burn the hell out of my beans. So <laughs> let's try soaking it, right? Um, yeah, I think I'll give that a shot with, because I, I definitely don't want to try this when I'm trying to roast an order for you guys, especially during holiday, like these orders coming in and stuff. And they like to come in like a lot at one time. <laughs> so I think I'll try it with like, uh, maybe like some coffee for friends and family that I always send out during holiday time. And I'll, I'll, I'll play with that. And I'll play with maybe a coffee that, um, maybe we, we just got to freaking go for it and spend the time and the money <laughs> and the green to like do a proper test and be like, here's a high density soak, high density bean, we're soaking. Here's a low density bean, low, ele low elevation in general, soak for one minute. Here's one in the middle, right? Maybe you should say, okay, let's do it. <laughs> I'm kind of curious now. So I've got a nice new camera too, to like take into that dark environment and still like feel comfortable about putting out content. You guys uh, saw it on the Instagram the other day, maybe. Um, I was like, oh, cool, cool, like we can shoot now. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'll check it out. I'll report back. Hopefully I'll do it like in, a, in an appropriate amount of time. We're busy, like I said. Um, but yeah, you know, I'll make time for it. I definitely want to try that. Since it's the way that Mill City Roasters has fashioned their very powerful roaster, um, yeah, I should, I should check it out. <laughs> and like, I think what happens is, is like, for me, I'll learn something and I'll feel like it's the end all be all for me. And what I should be doing with new information is just like tacking it on, you know, laying down another brick or maybe it's five new bricks. And I'm like, ooh, these five new bricks, man, you know? Um, instead of just like wrecking the whole wall and starting all over again, which is what I feel I have been doing for some reason. I'm not really sure why I've been doing that. Um, but yeah, I think the, the journey of roasting is not going to be a straight line. There's always these like weird sort of like up and downs and stuff. And that's fine. That's cool. That's like so natural. Um, the problem is, is like, I record what I learn and I put it out there and somebody may see like an old way of thinking or an old sort of approach to how I roast coffee. And maybe they believe like, maybe they take that and have their, that be their end all be all. So I apologize for that. Um, don't do that. You know, uh, for, for people who are being inspired to roast, I think that's great. And I, I really want to tell you like what I share is just what I share. It's just my documentation of my own journey. Um, I'm not trying to teach you how to do anything. I'm just trying to, if, if anything, I'm teaching how to just take action, take the first step and get inspired to do what you want to do, right? Like, I don't want to uh, <laughs> be seen as somebody who's telling you how to do what you, how, how to roast, all right? So hopefully you guys are getting, most, most people get that, you know what I mean? Okay, so um, over-caffeinated, yeah. Try spitting, I guess. I'm just, I'm just in Mike's camp. I'm just like, I'm not a professional. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna drink the coffee, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, for sure. When I first started <clears throat> cupping a lot, I was like, I was getting the shakes like at 11 at night. I was like, oh no, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta maybe spit half the time, you know? Or so, so that's a compromise you can make with yourself. Be like, I'll, I'll drink half, I'll spit half, you know, whatever. Thank you, Dev. I loved all the questions. I'm gonna send you a picture right now saying, hey buddy, I just answered all your questions and whatnot and stuff over a new blog right here. I'll send it to you. All right, cool. Sent it, boom, there you go. Um, okay. Good things. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.